um, repaint some of it so like you can see so I wanted you to see that you know just because it didn't record whatever I'll just do another one um, and you can see some trees in the background I kind of fixed my background a little bit I made like a um, here let me get closer I made a snow kind of berm kind of thing you know mm. and I put in some birch trees so I did like kind of a hill and then a little grass in there and like a shadow, right? That helps everything kind of blend together. And then you can see I already kind of outlined a new cabin. So I wanted my cabin a little bit bigger and just so you can see how it changes the space. And then I changed my river and water so that it's coming like a little open ice, a little open water. And remember I'm doing like a night scene. So I did it black in there and just to kind of work in some of these blacks. And then changed it so that the water is coming in front instead of that tree that I had. So that way it'll help. I can show you how to do like kind of a shoreline kind of thing with um, ice and stuff on there. So it's supposed to be like a water kind of tumbling and I, you know, some rocks and stuff in there. So it all works out, you know. Anyway, how do you do all this? Okay, so I have to turn my cameras a little. But um, I'm going to start with the getting the snow that, you know, like I said, that Bob Ross, he does that thing where he blends the snow and kind of has it paint in wet. Um, so there are ways that you can get a blended look without repainting the whole thing. And I kind of talk about that. And then, but maybe you don't want to, you know, if your paint is super washy as it is and you want to paint that cabin without it being all wet around it, that's totally okay. But um, what I do is um, I use a lot of water. And I got this white paint, you know. So one thing you can do is you can kind of work in, um, see that's super watery, right? But what you can do is with a rag, because you don't want it to really drip, you can kind of help blend that. And the white will dry really see-through. So even if, uh, you know, it looks like way too white, it probably won't uh, when you're done. Um, it'll be kind of see-through. But by me using a kind of a paper towel and blending that, um, that will also help kind of keep it wet without having to like kind of repaint the whole thing. So that's one thing you can do. But I'm going to um, paint into this cabin here. So remember if you want a brown cabin, how you make brown is you use, you make it orange first. So I do um, magenta. And um, I'm just using my counter here so I'm not showing you what I'm mixing. But I make a yellow and red. And then I add just a tiny bit of blue. And if it's too blue, add more red and yellow. Or too green, add more red, right? Anyway, I got a pretty good brown going on. Okay, so I'm going to just paint in where I have my peak. So see how that's kind of catching? It's because I didn't work that paint into there to make that be wet. Okay, so now it's a good idea to make one side of your um, picture, your, your building here, one side darker than the other, right? So like my moon or sun, whatever you want to call that, I want, I want this side to be darker. So Okay, and I'm not painting that too perfect because I'm going to work in some um, wood lines. So we're just kind of getting a general, general lay in and then making this other side darker. And I'm using my flat brush for this. So um, <laughs> I kind of painted that kind of funny. I don't know if I like that. Bring that up a little. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm using a darker in here because it's like an overhang. <laughs> I can do that. So if you try to paint an old cabin kind of look, it's okay if it's not perfect because you kind of get these like different kind of walls, you know, like handmade cabins kind of kind of tilted over time, you know. Okay. And then this, this is like a little wood entrance, wood shack, whatever you want, want to lean to, whatever you want to call that. I'm going to paint that kind of darker. 
and you can paint your roofs okay so you can have your roofs be um, snow covered but sometimes the snow is nice to see a little a little dark through it so I'll just show you on that one what you can do okay so you don't have to if you want your it depends on how you want your roof if you want your roof like super white looking like super snowy then you probably would not paint that a dark brown you know you'd leave it kind of snowy but if you want it to look kind of a light snow or something like that you would want to you know kind of paint this so here I'll just do a little bit So I didn't do a lot, but I just did kind of a light layer, and so you can see what that would look like. Okay, all right, so that's a pretty good cabin. So now I'm gonna go add in some wood striping, and I'm using the same brush here. I'm kind of just um, using that flat brush and kind of getting some wood lines in there. They do not have to be perfect. So if it's not looking like how you want it to, I would put get a little water and then work in some water. And that sometimes helps like blend those lines so it doesn't just look like paint paint marks, you know. Ow, more paint on that. Okay. So, and then if you want a door, window, whatever you're doing, right, now it's time to add that in. So do you want a dark door? Do you want a light door? Do you want this light to be lit up? So my other demo that I showed you guys, I had a, a dark door. So this one, I'm going to do a light, like a window. So then you can see the difference. Okay, so... Okay, when you paint them in, if they're not perfect, that's totally okay because you got to paint your door and like the trim around it. So I'm picking up like a darker brown black again going on here. I'm just going to use a flat brush for this. So just by kind of working that in, it kind of looks like trim, you know? So like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning. I would just, you're just laying that in. And my windows are not glowing very much because the paint's still wet. So I would go back in when I was done here and I would work in a nice, a little touch of highlight, right? Maybe a little snow on the edge, something like that, right? You can work in a little little hinge, you know, if you have a little uh, sill of some sort, right? Okay, so I just kind of worked in a little bit of black. Kind of edge that all off. And I'm not crazy about my brown cabin here. It's like really brown. So in my look I got going on is more of a moon look with purples and stuff. So I really should work that in a little. So I'm going to. And adding in a shadow is going to help. So if you mess up in the snow and stuff like that, that is okay because we're going to add... We're gonna fix that up, but I need kind of a shadow. Don't make your shadows black, okay? You can add a little bit of black because, you know, if uh, it was, a, if you have a lot of black going on, but really snow's not black, really, you know? And then this shadow looks a little weird because we haven't worked in the snow, so that's why I said don't worry if this is not looking quite right because you want to work in some snow and get that to look kind of blend it all out, you know? Right, like like you have kind of some, some drifts going on, right? <clears throat> um, okay, so I'll just get a little closer here so you can see that cabin a little bit better. So I didn't um, 
I didn't worry, you know, it's not perfect. I've got to put some snow on there and I'll, I'll wait for that to dry a little and touch that up. And then by working the snow, this will look way better. So I'll show you the difference. Okay, so I'm going to get that flat brush again, right? And I'm going to load it up with white, just like pure white paint. And Bob Ross would use his palette knife a lot, but I know that you guys don't really have those, so... Um, I got my kitty. Watch out, Dan. Okay, so um, you're going to want to get a nice edge, nice snowy kind of edge, right? Okay. And then you, I'm loading up more paint, right? So I'm going to, I want this paint to catch. It does not have to be perfect. So even if you get some heavier spots and some not, that's okay. Right? So, so you get that, that's how one has that texture showing through. And then, um, Bob Ross would do a kind of like pull down some icicles kind of look. So I'm going to get my paint here and then I'm going to kind of pull down, right? He would do this with a palette knife and, and oil paint. But remember, oil paint is different than your paint. Like this paint is kind of see-through, you know, so you might have to go in again with that white. That white gets see-through and kind of work back in some white to have that snow actually work out for you. Okay, so... My house isn't perfect. Like I said, I wasn't really liking that, but that's okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave it. Like I said, you know, they weren't all perfect. Maybe get a little ice in here. Right, some little icicles hanging off. Stuff like that. You can do whatever you want. Oh, it got too wet. It's running. I had water on my brush. Okay. All right, so I can touch up those windows a little. Right. So anyway, I didn't work the snow around the bottom here. It's like the last thing I need to do. So with a dry brush, lots of white paint, I'm going to make those drifts come up into the cabin and then pull those down. So you don't really want to have like, um, you don't want to outline it in white. You don't want to outline it in shadow. You don't want to outline it in black. You kind of just work a different color here and there and then it looks a little bit better. And if you don't like the way that that's catching on the canvas, like if it's standing out too much, then you can always get some water and dry it off. Go back in and kind of do that. It'll soften it a little. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> so that's the difference. So you kind of try to blend that, and that looks kind of weird there. I'll probably fix that. But then what I do too is I have like... Um, I make it look like someone lives there. So if you wanted to add a little chimney or something like that, totally okay. More snow, whatever, right? Okay, so I just work in a little shadow color. So I want it to look like they're walking down to this creek. Maybe the snow is really high, right? It's coming up into the building. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Kind of, once again, like I said, fuzz that, water, soften it. Okay. Anyway. So I want my 
and there's kind of a glare going on. <coughs> you can probably see that a little bit better. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right, so moving on. <laughs> okay, so how do you do trees and all that kind of stuff? Um, usually what Bob Ross would do too is he would, he really thought about his foreground, like how, what kind of foreground are you going to have, you know? So are you going to have like trees? He usually had trees coming in from the side and trees coming in from the side here. And that's why I did that. In my other example, I drew in this like big hill with these trees that are going to come in. He would have probably have done the same thing on this side as add in a tree. So I'm going to pop in trees. So he, it was all about framing the canvas, you know, like, like this isn't framed. This is just all open. So I'm going to show you how to do an evergreen. There's a different way. And I actually do have a fan brush. So um, I'll show you how to use that. But most of the time you guys don't have a fan brush. So I'm going to... First, you know, okay, so what you can do is mix up your green color, or whatever you're using. I don't have a lot of green going on, so I don't want to use necessarily, I mean, I do, I have a lot of yellow, but, okay, so get your tree in, right? Remember I said that, um, decide where you want that to come down. So, like, I maybe want this tree kind of next to my cabin, that's kind of a big tree, so maybe I should bring it down like it's in front a little bit more. That's probably more appropriate. And then I could always put like another tree back here. Maybe it's behind the cabin just to fill in that space, right? So um, you can do this with a lot of different brushes. So you can use like a pointed brush. You can use a flat brush. You can use a fan brush, round brush. Really, it doesn't matter. But it's just all about like how you put the, the branches in. So... I'm going to use my round brush because most of you should have one of those. And it's a little bit bigger. And basically, you're going to just kind of touch the brush and then kind of go in a back and forth motion, right? Touch the canvas. I mean. And you're kind of pushing into the canvas, right? So even if your tree doesn't look perfect at first, that's okay. Like, I'm going to leave that. And even if you're doing a tree really weird like let's say you're making it look really stylized so I'm gonna kind of do that on this one like let's say you did not make that look very natural you know and the, but it's so it's better to do that's okay it's better to even if it doesn't look super natural it's better or it's better to even a <laughs> supernatural right um, it's better to leave it open, like don't fill in like crazy because if, once you start to fill in and it gets bigger, that's when you have issues. So it's better to keep your trees kind of small and kind of light so that they look airy. But this is way open, so I'm going to fill in a little. So then I would go back in and I would kind of work that trunk part. Right? And that already looks better. And I'm going to keep going. So remember the edge of the canvas, that's what you guys kind of tend to do is you don't fill in, like this bottom part would be kind of filling in. Okay, so you don't want to necessarily see like the whole trunk, you know, like so this is where you, you get some variety, some color variety. So right now, this is kind of washy. I'm going to kind of go back over it and kind of fill in a little bit and do different colors. A little bit of black, a little bit more of the, yeah, I got a lot of blues going on. Maybe I'll pop in some blues or something. But that's where you want to, and I'll help fill in and also help get some color variety. But I'm kind of going back and forth, pushing into the canvas, right? Okay, let me get some black. So as it comes forward and I have a night scene, it usually gets darker. But as long as you just kind of make it more random, like you're filling in, you're trying to make it look like branches, but also branches that come in front, branches that are in back, branches on their side. So the only way to do that is to make this look a little bit more natural is by keeping it, making it look airy Okay, now, if you still really messed up your tree, that's okay, because remember, we're doing a winter scene. So you can always um, paint in snow to help fix this. And I'm really getting that edge. I usually paint my edges black or white. So I was getting into that edge. Okay, right? So that looks pretty good. And then 
One thing I just didn't do is I always do that shadow and kind of try to um, kind of work out that snow so that tree doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of it. That it looks like it's blending in to your scene a little bit better. Okay. All right, but so if I was to work, if I was to work white paint onto this, that would be a problem. I'd have to clean my brush every single time that I, I did it because it wouldn't. It's super wet right now. So I'll show you how to do a couple other things like a tree and different stuff while we're waiting, and one with a fan brush. So you can see I kind of got a tree going on there. I started that. I'll make that look like an evergreen. Okay. So I'm gonna get my green color again. To get more paint <laughs> okay so this one i'm going to do with a fan brush so you can see i loaded up my fan brush pretty good and it's the same way like when i told you to use a fat flat brush or a round brush it's the same technique where i pushed with the edge of the can edge of the brush right and and then kind of randomized it and went back and forth but with a fan brush it's a it can be a little easier but can also be harder so let me show you here Right? I'm getting kind of random. And then what Bob Ross would do is he'd do stuff like this. Okay. So what happens is, and that's that's kind of the reason why I'm not crazy about the fan brush, is that you get like um I don't know, <laughs> I'm not pointing at it. You get like these kind of marks that are like just all the same. Okay. So as long, because it's going like this, right? And because I'm using my brush differently, it's not quite all the same, but sometimes it can look way too similar. So that's why I'm not crazy about the fan brush. As long as you're using it differently, you know, it'll work out okay. But um, <coughs> students tend to use it like all the same. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm trying to hide all my Tupperware back there. <laughs> Might notice I got a bunch of Tupperware. Putting together Legos, it's taking forever. <laughs> okay, so that green is way too light. I gotta work some more in, right? Okay, anyway, I'll just be really quick about this. But you can see it gives it a different look when I'm done here. <coughs> okay, so what I like about the, um, the evergreen, the fan brush is that Sorry. I like to use it for grass. That's my favorite thing. So I, I water down some some paint. Kind of like, here, this is kind of important. <coughs> so I water down some paint, and I kind of do that, right? Load up the brush. So not like, have, not filled with paint, but like a little bit. And then you kind of just like pop, pop it in. So, and I use grass wherever I think. I use it at the base of trees a lot <coughs> to kind of help it like go together better, like along the slope or whatever. But <coughs> a lot of you guys don't have fan brushes, but that's okay. You can just use your utility brush. And that's actually what I do all the time is I don't use a fan brush, but I use, I use this and you load it up with paint and you just do the same thing. So maybe I want some over here. Don't do too much paint. The fan brush, the utility brush can get a little out of hand because it's much, much bigger. <coughs> or I use a flat brush or an old brush. An old brush works great for this because it's like got kind of. 
Okay, anyway, um, so now you want to add snow, right? <clears throat> so that's where I was saying, like, you could add some snow. And in my other demo, I showed you guys how to do um, a birch tree. I'm not doing that in this one. I mean, you can always look up how to do a birch tree. But, okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. But <clears throat> when you do snow, so, like, kind of decide what scene you want, you know? Like, like, I got this little tree that has a lot of snow, and then this other big tree doesn't. That could seem realistic. You know, the big tree could have hit in the wind and, and not have it. And then, but you know, what I say is pick a side to do the snow first, pick one side, and then you can always add more snow. You know, you could always make both sides have snow or more snow, but usually like, I think it looks better if you pick one side to have heavier snow than the other. So just pure white paint. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna work it in the same way but focusing on that one side. Now, if your paint starts to get muddy, like mine's starting to get a little muddy, that's okay, but don't have it get too muddy. <clears throat> so if it starts to get too muddy, I should kind of clean it, but it's okay to have it be a little bit, like it should add, it should have some dimension, like it shouldn't just look like, you know, white snow. Okay, so you can see <coughs> that back one I put like more branch-like, you know? And so I'm gonna kind of finish that one. Right? So if you make it look a little more <coughs> like boughs, you know, that are hanging, you can always do something like that. But what I do is I kind of go, I do the sides, like I do the sides, but then I work it in the middle too, so. And I get kind of heavier and chunkier with my paint as I come down and thicker, right? Something like that. <clears throat> A little extra. So I definitely got a snow scene going on, so. I would want to work that into my other stuff. I'm going to go back over that. Remember this white is see-through, so I don't want to see that. I'm popping a little bit. I got some thick snow going on, so... You don't have to have it be so heavy, but that white will dry a little duller. Okay, always take a step back, you know, see what it looks like. <coughs> and that it's looking natural. Okay, some of my, um, <clears throat> I always kind of work in the base of the snow too. Like, like I work the grass into the base of the trees and then work the snow into the base of the grass. If it wasn't snow, I would do a shadow of some sort. So this creek, a lot of times you get the ice that sits along the edge of the shore. So I'm just kind of working that in. <clears throat> yeah. Blending it a little, right? <clears throat> and then um, I want it to have kind of some snow that's fall, like ice that's falling. So I'm getting my brush, or this is another thing the fan brush is good for. Uh, Ross uses it for this too. <clears throat> is if you wanted to have the look of falling like snow or ice, is he would use the fan brush for kind of stuff but you can use a normal brush too right like if you had a little waterfall or something in there <clears throat> anyway <clears throat> okay important is that when you are done 
you want to make sure you work in a highlight color throughout everything. So like mine's kind of a moon scene. So um, I did like a yellow through it. So you'd want to <clears throat> pick up that yellow or maybe light blue or whatever it is. And you want to <clears throat> just kind of like I already did, but you want to kind of make sure that you had worked that throughout so that, you know, maybe just a touch of it in the trees and that's still wet, but okay. So like maybe a touch of it on some of these rocks, right? And that's going to help with that kind of glow. And like these windows might be kind of putting a little glow out, right? So like kind of stuff like that. I turned off the light because I thought I was getting a, like a glare. <clears throat> okay, so, and obviously if it didn't like, if it went too yellow or too blue or whatever it is, you would fix that. Just kind of dull it down. Okay, so, I mean, obviously I'd throw in some snow in some of there or whatever, but I think I'm pretty good. Call this good. <clears throat> right? Okay, signing your name. That's the last thing that I talk about. <clears throat> the best way to sign your name is to use a script liner. If you don't have a brush like this, <clears throat> like where it's got, a, you know, at least a nice long bristle to it and kind of thin and whatever, you might not want to sign your name. You might want to sign your name in just like a brown marker or something like that. But um, if you are going to, so what you do is you use water and you're going to load up your brush. And I say don't use black. Use a color that you've kind of been using throughout. <clears throat> like, yeah, I have been using black, but I don't want my name to stand out a lot. So I'm kind of using a black, green, brown, whatever. <clears throat> and then how you paint it in is the best way to do this is you take your pinky and you like balance it and you touch the canvas. So you, you're resting your pinky on it, right? So then when I do that, I can like freely... Do things and this is good advice for any small detail if you're trying to like touch up that moon and different stuff right so um <clears throat> anyway I gotta turn my canvas to do this. okay and then as you're signing it don't um worry like pick a spot Um, <clears throat> okay, my camera went away, so I'm sorry, but when you paint it, you, um, want to, don't worry about it, like, filling in the whole thing. A smaller, thinner signature is better than a super fat one. So, anyway, that was going to be the end of it anyway, so I guess we're good. <laughs>